High Grange Park. So we have done a little vote amongst some of the pupils at Stansted and they have chosen a Diary of a Wimpy Kid book for term six. So hopefully you're all having um, a nice safe time at home. Some of you have started to come back into school, but hopefully lots of you are going to enjoy story time um, for this term. And we've got Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Okay, so this is The Ugly Truth uh, by Jeff Kinney. September, Thursday. It's been almost two and a half weeks since me and my best friend, Rowley Jefferson, had our big fight. To be honest with you, I thought he would have come crawling back to me by now, but for some reason that hasn't happened. I'm actually starting to get a little concerned. Because school starts back up in a few days, and if we're going to get a friendship back on track, something needs to happen quick. If me and Rowley are really through, that would stink because the two of us had a pretty good thing going. Can I take a rest break? It's only like three more blocks. Now that our friendship is, is history, I'm in the market for a new best friend. The problem is I've invested all my time in Rowley and I don't have anyone lined up to take his place. The two best options I have at this point are Christopher Brownfield and Tyson Sanders, but each of those guys has his own issues. I hung out with Christopher for the last few weeks of the summer, mostly because he's a really excellent mosquito magnet, but Christopher is more of a summertime friend than a school year friend. Tyson is nice enough, but we like to do the same video games but he pulls his pants all the way down when he uses the urinal and I don't know if I can ever get past that. The only other kid my age who's not paired up with someone is Fregley, but I ruled him out as a best friend material a long time ago. I bet you can't fit your whole foot in my mouth. Anyway, I'm still keeping the door open a crack for Rowley, just in case. But he really wants to save this friendship, he'd better do something fast. Because with the way things stand, he's not going to come out looking very good in my autobiography. Greg Heffley, Chapter 8, Childhood. I used to live near this kid. I think his name was Rupert or Roger or something. With my luck though, I'll go on to be rich and famous and Rowley will still find a way to ride my coattails. I used to be friends with Greg Heffley by Rowley Jefferson. Saturday. The reason I don't see things changing between me and Rowley is because he's already found himself a replacement friend. Or to be more accurate, his parents did. For the past few weeks, Rowley's been hanging out with his teen this teenager named Brian. Whenever I go by Rowley's house, he's out in his front yard throwing a football or a frisbee with a guy who looks like he's in high school or college. Well, I did some poking around and found out that Brian, this Brian guy isn't just some normal kid from the neighbourhood. He's part of a company called Cool Brian, which is sort of like a big brother for hire kind of thing. In fact, I'd be willing to bet money this guy's name isn't really Brian. Mum said she thinks the cool Brian thing is a great idea because it gives kids a role model they can look up to. That makes me kind of mad because the way I see it, I'm Rowley's role model. And now Rowley's parents are paying for some guy to do what I've been doing for all these years for free. The thing that really burns me is that Rowley probably doesn't even know his parents are paying this guy to spend time with him. And I don't think it would bother Rowley if he did know the truth. Today I saw Rowley hanging out with a different cool Brian, so Rowley's regular guy must have had the day off. But I could tell Rowley didn't even notice. Tuesday. Today was the first day of school. I don't want to jinx things, but it's looking like this could be the great year for me. In homeroom, we got our textbooks for the semester. My school can't afford to get new books every year, so we usually get hand-me-downs. But when you get a book that 10 kids had before you, it makes it kind of hard to do any actual learning. Usually, I have really bad luck when it comes to previous book owners, 
Last year, I got a maths book that had belonged to Brian Goot. And that really, that didn't really exactly up my cool factor in the hallways. But this year I totally lucked out. When I got my maths book, I found it had been it used to belong to Jordan Jury. Jordan Jury is the most popular kid in the grade above me, so carrying his textbook around should translate into some major popularity points. One reason Jordan is so popular is because he always had these big blowout parties and it's really hard to get invited, but I figured this algebra book could be just the thing I need to get on his radar. Speaking of popular kids, I sat near Bryce Anderson and his group of friends at lunch today. Bryce is basically the Jordan Jury of my grade, and he's got a bunch of cronies who are always going along with everything he says. Hey, what's that high-pitched noise? Yeah, I hear it too. Ow! And those guys are loyal to Bryce no matter how dumb he makes them look. See, Bryce Anderson has the right idea. He doesn't actually need a best friend because he's got a bunch of lackeys who basically worship him. The reason me and Rowley didn't make it is because we were equal partners in our friendship and I don't think that kind of model has a chance of working out. Friday. At school today I heard Rowley tell some kid he was going to a rock concert tonight. I admit I was a little jealous since I've never been to a real concert myself. But when I found out who was performing, I was glad I wasn't invited. Joshy. Scream! Still, it kind of irks me that Rowley is having more fun than I am. In fact, it seems like everyone is having more fun than me these days. There are some kids in my grade who post their picture online. And from the way of the looks of things, they're all having a way better time than I am. I don't want people thinking my life is lame, so I decided to take some pictures to show how great things are going for me. All you really need is a digital camera and a photo editing program and you can make it look like you're having a total blast. Tonight I was right in the middle of creating a wild New Year's Eve party scene when I got busted by mum. Oh well, mum won't let me post the photos on the computer anyway because of privacy and all that. Or maybe it's because she learned her lesson after letting my older brother, Roderick, post his pictures. Roderick's been trying to get a job so he can buy a new drum set, but nobody will hire him. Mum told him that nowadays employers look up people they're thinking of hiring and that his pictures are probably hurting his chances. So Roderick ha replaced his band pictures with this one. Wednesday. This year, everyone in my grade has to take advanced health, which covers some top secret stuff that I guess they didn't think we were ready for until now. In the first few classes, the boys and the girls are mixed together, but today Nurse Powell said she was going to split us up. She sent the girls down to Mrs Gordon's room and then she put in a video for us boys to watch. From what I could tell, the video was at least 30 years old, so I'm sure Dad watched the exact same tape when I was he, he was my age. I'm not going to describe everything that they showed in the video because it was actually pretty disgusting. If you ask me, some of that stuff doesn't really belong in the classroom. Rowley didn't even make it through the whole video. He passed out at the two minute mark when they said the word perspiration. To be honest with you, I don't know if Rowley is ready for this stuff. He's basically like a little kid. He told me once that he avoids the older kids at school because he's afraid he's going to catch puberty. In fact, now that I think about it, I haven't seen Cool Brian for a while, so I wonder if Rowley's avoiding him too because he thinks he's contagious. The same kind of thing happened in last year's health class when they did a smoking unit. The teacher said that you never know who's going to offer you a cigarette and that it could be even be your best friend. Well, after Rowley heard that, he wouldn't even walk on the same side of the street of, as me for a solid month. Believe me, I don't need some teacher to tell me it's not cool to smoke. My grandfather convinced me of that last year on Thanksgiving. Anyway... 
I think Rowley's just one of those kids who are always going to be a few years behind everyone else maturity-wise. Rowley doesn't even know how to tie his shoes yet, but he's, he's the kind of person who has a Velcro on everything. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the first section um, of the Diary of a Kid book. Get ready for the next section.